Hey, welcome to Black Rifle Homestead. It's Mallory with another video for you to help you out in these tough times with inflation and talk of possible food shortages coming. I want to give you guys some encouragement and some tips on how to not just survive this time in history, but to thrive through it. And if this is something that concerns you, which it concerns most Americans, there's hardly an American who is not affected by inflation. So if that is something that you want to learn more about and you're a little bit nervous or worried about how things are going, then keep watching. Make sure to subscribe because we will be putting out more content like this. And I hope that this video helps you out, get, helps give you some action tips to take and helps you to steward your family well. If you like content that's written form uh, or you want to have these things written out, we do have a blog post that was just published as well. So you can get all of these tips I'm gonna talk about in written form, you can print it out so that you can refer back to these tips. So the day I'm filming this is June, wait, it's Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. And just the other day I watched this interview with a pollster Frank Luntz and he was talking about an inflation explosion and I'll link the video below it was with CNBC and he was talking about how we are less than two weeks away from this basically where inflation is going to get even worse even without watching that video just from what I have read already the people that I'm following we haven't seen the worst of it unfortunately the gas prices are probably going to go up food prices are probably gonna go up, everything is <laughs> gonna go up. Not only will there be higher prices, but there actually may be actual food shortages. So you won't be able to get the food that you need or want. And that is a really scary to think about, especially if you have young mouths to feed, little kids in your family, or you have a lot of mouths to feed. What's the cause of this? Several things, but one of the things that can contribute or a couple of the things that might contribute to food shortages are crop failures in the ukraine and in the u.s particularly in kansas having to do with the wheat harvest i will also link an article by npr talking about the kansas wheat issue but it's not looking good farmers aren't able to harvest their crops and given that americans consume a lot of wheat not just in bread but in other products this could have a huge impact on people now if you're a family like us where i have to be gluten free we don't consume much wheat in this house so you have two choices with the coming wheat, wheat shortage you could change your diet and go to a gluten free diet or two you could stock up on flour or preferably whole wheat berries so that you can grind your own flour the wheat berries last a lot longer than flour um, just make sure you have a wheat grinder or a grain a grain mill in order to make flour so you could stock up that's if you don't want to cut wheat out of your diet then you would definitely want to stock up on wheat so that you can continue having those things like bread Another food source that is starting to fail in the United States, again in Kansas, poor Kansas, we are in Kansas actually, is a bunch of cattle, like thousands of cattle, possibly up to 10,000 cattle died just recently. And I'll link another, a couple of articles about that. And beef is a major staple for Americans. It's a major protein staple. It's a great source of protein and calories, pro, um, protein and fat. That could have a big impact as well. With all of that said, I know that it's, maybe sounds like a lot of doom and gloom and oh no what do we do we're just we're just doomed no we're not you have to take steps you have to take action to feed your family and ensure that your family can be fed in the coming weeks and months because again nobody can predict exactly what's going to happen or exactly when it's going to happen but probably will happen in sooner rather than later if you haven't started creating a stockpile of food now is the time to do it. Yesterday was the best time to start, but today is better than tomorrow. So start today, even if it's just picking up a few cans of food on the way home from work or something like that, just start today, start somewhere. And I am now gonna give you the tips on what to do. So number one, start a garden if you haven't already. I have, 
I'm starting to build up a collection of videos, garden related, where you can follow along and learn along with me as I garden. We have quite a large garden, a larger garden, not as big as some, but it's a larger garden this year. But you don't have to start out with 16 six by three foot beds, garden beds. You can just start out with whatever small space you have in your yard. Maybe you don't have a big yard and you can't have that many. Start somewhere, get one garden bed or get a five containers to start growing something in. Look at what your family eats a lot of, look at what would be most cost effective to grow. So maybe you eat a lot of salads and growing your own lettuce and greens would be very cost effective so that you don't have to buy it at the store. You know, sometimes we buy lettuce and then it goes bad because we don't eat all of it. That's food waste, that's money down the drain, money in the trash. And so think about what your, your family eats. If you don't have very much yard space, then think about using your front and back flower beds along your house to grow food instead of ornamentals. It might look funny to the neighbors, but who cares? You're growing food for your family. If you don't even have that, maybe you live in an apartment or maybe there's really strict rules like HOA or something like that then you can grow in containers. A really good way to do that is with a vertical gardening with something like the green stock. And I do have a referral link below. And if you use the coupon code that's listed there, you can get $10 off $75 or more. So that it's this big five tiered pot, basically one on top of the other, where you can vertical garden, you can put it on your porch or your deck. You can even put it on your front porch and you can save space, but you can actually grow quite a lot of food in that one green stock. You could also just get regular pots or buckets or bags and grow things in, in that too. So whatever, however you do it, don't think you have to go big or go home. It's not all or nothing. Start somewhere. All right, number two, start learning different food preservation techniques. And I'm gonna go through some of the top ones. So the first one that might come to mind is canning. This is something that I will be embarking on this year as well, so we can kind of learn along with each other. Um, canning is a really great way to preserve food. There's water bath canning and there's pressure canning. So water bath canning is usually where most people start because it's a little easier. And that is where you're canning acidic foods or foods that can be made acidic. So tomatoes, pickles, jams, jellies, preserves, that kind of thing. Then pressure canning is for all the other stuff that's not acidic. So your beans, green beans, carrots, potatoes, um, meat, soups, you know, combination, things like that. You want to always make sure to follow USDA approved recipes because you do want to make sure you're doing canning safely. Um, anything by ball. So the ball canning company, they make canning jars and lids. They are a really great resource. I'll link one of the books that we have below for canning. As far as a canner goes, we have the 23 quart press, uh, Presto pressure canner. And you could have a separate water bath canner and then a separate pressure canner. But if you wanna save money and not have two and save space too, and not have these two big devices, you could just get a pressure canner and then you can use it for water bath canning as well. So it can do double duty like that. You don't need a separate water bath. That's, that's what we have. Um, I also love Melissa K. Norris. She's a fifth generation homesteader and she has a ton of resources and is a real expert on canning and all sorts of other things homestead related. So I'll link her website below. Make sure to also stock up on canning jars and lids in the rings. There has been a shortage in the past couple of years on canning supplies. So if you see something on sale, like I saw these quart wide mouth mason jars and lids on sale at our local grocery store the other day and I snatched up two packs of them. You just wanna buy them whenever you see them or what, especially when they're on sale because you just never know when there might be a shortage of that and you obviously can't can without the proper equipment. The second way is dehydration. And this is something that I started last year and it's very easy and economical, especially if you already have a dehydrator now buying one, they, they come at different price points. So the one we have is just a simple round 
dehydrator. It was a hand-me-down from my mom. The Excalibur is a favorite among the homesteading community and that's kind of like a goal to get that eventually. It's it's very good dehydrator um, and more, it has like square trays instead of the round. Um, but just, you can use whatever kind of dehydrator you can get your hands on uh, to dehydrate things like fresh herbs. That's what I really like doing. And when I have an excess of herbs, putting them into, in the dehydrator and making my own dried herbs and spices. Like I have a video of me doing that drying basil from last year and it was so good. And even the dried basil was so fragrant and smelled so much better than store-bought. You could even dry greens. So like if you have a bunch of extra lettuce or kale or spinach, you could, you could dehydrate that and make it into greens powder or make kale chips. You can dry fruit and make fruit leather or dried fruit. You could even make jerky, like beef jerky in a dehydrator. So it's very versatile, very easy. If you don't have a dehydrator or can't afford one, you could also dehydrate using warm, dry air, like you could air dry herbs. Or if your oven can go down really, really low, like I think below 170 or 150, you could also dehydrate in the oven. So you don't even really need any special equipment for that. All right, number three, the third way to, to preserve food is by freezing. Now this is even easier than dehydrating because we all have a freezer in our home, at least one attached to our refrigerator and some of us have a deep freezer as well. But freezing is a great way to preserve food. However, because it relies on that electricity, it should not be the only way you're preserving food. So we do have a quarter of a cow share in our deep freezer and it's a great way to preserve meat. Really easy. If you come across a sale at the grocery store that you could preserve meat that way, just make sure to wrap it up really good and put it in uh, freezer bags so that they don't get freezer burn. But again, don't rely solely on freezing because it could fail you. And then if you have put all your eggs in one basket, then you're gonna lose all your food if there's a power outage for an extended period of time. The fourth way to preserve food is by root cellaring. And you don't have to have an actual dirt root cellar in order to root cellar. Basically this means many types of produce can be stored in their whole raw form if they're in the right conditions. So some need dry air, some need a little bit of moisture, some need cooler air, some don't, some need to be cured like pumpkins and, and winter squash. But there's a lot of things you can keep in a root cellar environment. So like apples, onions, garlic, um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, and winter squash. So that is by far the easiest and most economical way to preserve food because you really don't have to do much to it. Now on the other end of the spectrum, the fifth way and final way is freeze drying. So this is definitely by far the most expensive way to preserve food, but it's also the longest lasting. So if you can afford it, I would highly recommend investing in a freeze dryer. It's That is a dream purchase for us. I'll link the harvest right below. It's again, a favorite in the homesteading community, but basically freeze dried food can be good on the shelf for 25 years or more. So like if you get the emergency food that's you know already made up for you freeze dried, that is shelf stable for at least 25 years. So if you're gonna freeze dry, you gotta make sure you store it in the right way if you want it to last that long but freeze drying is a great way to make things last and it doesn't take up very much room and it's really light. You can use it for camping, you know, in a non-emergency situation, that kind of stuff. But like I'm gonna talk about in the next point, if you can't freeze dry, if that's out of your budget to buy a freeze dryer, it's, I think it's over $3,000, then you definitely wanna buy your own emergency food. All right, so that brings me to the next point. So we're done with the preserving stuff. So moving on to tip number three, create planning space or breathing room for a food emergency. So this means having at least one month of food put away for your family. If you can afford more, then get more. If you could do a month and a half or two or three months, then definitely do that. But at least one month, that should be the minimum. And with this, um, a great idea is getting that freeze dried emergency food from a place like My Patriot Supply. I am an affiliate with them, so we don't do earn a little commission if somebody purchases, but it doesn't increase the cost for you. 
and it's a free way basically to support us. If you have special dietary concerns, make sure to check the labels before buying, but My Patriot Supply is a wonderful company that has very good uh, emergency food that's freeze dried and will last over two decades, if not longer. Now, in addition to having that freeze dried emergency food, cause that's like a last, last resort, right? Hopefully you never have to, it's kind of one of those things where you hopefully never have to touch it. It's kind of like insurance, but if you do have to touch it, you will be so glad that you have it <laughs> in that situation. Like freeze dried food was, you know, pour you just add water. It'll never taste better. Like, it'll be so good to you if you have to use it because it will be a pretty dire situation if you have to use it. In addition to that, we highly recommend also stocking up on regular foods that your family eats um, in forms that are shelf stable. So things like canned goods, canned fruits and vegetables. So just the other day, and actually today also, I picked up some uh, canned, vegetables like beets, carrots, spinach. Uh, we have green beans already, corn, what else? Tomato products, pasta sauce, stuff like that. So stock up on fruits and veggies. We have canned peaches and pears. Stock up on things that your family will eat. Applesauce is another good idea too. And these things, you know, if you're just getting the basic kind are going to be less than a dollar a can. And you know, you don't have to do all of this all at once. That's the other thing I want to stress is you don't need to feel like I need to drop $500 today that I don't have on emergency food. You don't have to do that. Every time you go grocery shopping, pick up a little, pick up like five or $10 or $20 or whatever your budget can spare in extra food. Other shelf stable items would be things like dry pasta, rice, oats, other grains like wheat and quinoa, dry beans, instant potatoes, dried fruit, canned tuna and chicken, coffee, tea, applesauce, crackers, cereal, dry milk, whatever those things that your family normally eats, stock up on those. This is not the time to try new things or experiment. You want to stay with family favorites. If you have a baby that needs formula or might need formula in the future, or if you're pregnant, it's a very good idea to stock up on formula. We all know that there's been a formula shortage. We use the Mount Capra homemade goat milk formula recipe and their products. It's a, a recipe that meets all of the FDA guidelines. So it is safe and our 10 month old is thriving on it. So uh, you can stock up on all the ingredients that that recipe calls for, they're shelf stable, and then you can have them ready to go. And I will have my affiliate link to Mount Capra in the description box and make sure to use that link and the coupon code that's listed for 10% off your first order as a new customer. All right, number four, kind of going along with the food, ensure your water sources are clean. So this means having a water purification system and preferably having more than one. It's really good to stick to the rule of threes. So having a, set, a primary, secondary and tertiary way to purify your water. So uh, the number one that we would recommend is Berkey. Um, Berkey is our day-to-day -day water filter. It can purify as well. You can pour water from a stream or a lake or whatever and put it in there and it will purify. You also could use, um, have on hand those personal uh, filtering straws where you can actually, like you could literally go to a stream or a pond and drink through the straw and it would purify it as it's going through the straw. Those are pretty cool. Have one each for each member of your family and water purification tablets. So those are three ways, Berkey, a filtering straw and water purification tablets to ensure that you have clean water. You could also boil water as well, but boiling won't get out any particulates. So that's where the Berkey would come in. You also might want to have a stockpile of bottles of water, so purified or spring water, the gallon jugs. Um, even if you have a Berkey, that's still a good idea. If you don't have access to fresh water outside, like if, if you don't live near a pond or a creek or something, and you can't like go out and harvest water to put through your Berkey, 
then having some already purified water on hand is good. The recommendation is one gallon per person per day. So this is something that you can just add a couple of gallons for each during each shopping trip. That would just be a couple of dollars. And over time, you if you do that every single shopping trip, over time, you will eventually get what you need. All right, number five is to have resources printed out or in printed form. A YouTuber that I recently started following um, her channel is called Pursuit of Simplicity. I'll have her link down below. Uh, she said, well, what if the internet goes down and you can't access your favorite recipes, right? You need to have those printed out or have your favorite cookbooks and also having not just, not just recipes, but also books that can help you out in an emergency situation like a first aid book or a for book on foraging food or survival skills, books like that, have them printed in printed form, like in books or printed from the internet, because if the power goes out, we will not be able to just Google stuff. Number six, stock up on medical supplies. The very, very least that you should have is a basic first aid kit. And to me, that is not enough. That's definitely not enough. You need to make sure to have things like OTC medications, basic things like acetaminophen, ibuprofen, Gas-X, Tums, Imodium for diarrhea, Benadryl for allergies, stool softener, guafenicin or cough medicine, and then children's versions of these things if you have children. You know, you can't just give your baby a, an ibuprofen pill. You need to have it in a liquid form. Band-Aids, gauze, medical tape, quick clot, which is like this powder that you put into a wound if it, if it won't stop bleeding, medical scissors, a tourniquet, topical medications, so things like Neosporin, which is an antibiotic cream, benzocaine gel, if there's like a burn, aloe vera gel, sunscreen, anti-itch cream, bug spray. Uh, you want, you'll want a thermometer, blood pressure cuff and stethoscope, tweezers, like if somebody gets a splinter or something, and any natural remedies your family likes. So for us, colloidal silver is a must. Colloidal silver is like a natural antibiotic. It's really great for sickness or preventing sickness, as well as essential oils and manuka honey. If you can, get extras of any prescription medications that you're on. See if your doctor would be willing to write like a larger prescription so that you can get more and then a couple times a year, make sure to go through your stash of medications and discard anything that is expired and then restock. That's really important. Okay, and then number seven, this is the last one. Make sure to have other necessities stocked on your shelves. So you don't just want medical stuff and food and water. You also need like basic toiletries too, right? You need to keep clean, you need hygienic stuff. So things like, here we go, get your pen ready, or you can just go to the blog post, bath soap, shampoo, or dry shampoo. You know, ladies, I, I thought of this the other day, you know, if we don't have running water, let's see, we're in that kind of situation, how are we gonna bathe? You know, I mean, bathing won't be a super big priority, but feeling clean can contribute to higher morale. Okay, you can wash with baby wipes. That's what soldiers do on deployment. That's what my husband has done. You do a baby wipe bath. But what about our hair for us ladies? I realized that I need to have some dry shampoo on hand because just freshening up that way, feeling like my hair is in a huge grease ball, uh, that would make me feel better in a, in a situation where it's just really stressful. So it seems like a small thing and it seems superficial, but it's really about the morale and keeping that up. Okay, back to the list. <laughs> Lotion, feminine hygiene products. There has been a shortage in that area. So if you see like your favorite, make sure to stock up on that. Um, deodorant. <laughs> if you're in close quarters in an emergency situation, really don't wanna be stinking. Diapers, if you have a baby, baby wipes. Even if you don't have a baby, like I said, the baby wipe bath will be crucial. Diaper cream, disinfectant spray or wipes hand sanitizer, toilet paper, paper towels, garbage bags, fire starter and matches, or you know lighters, or both <laughs> preferably, batteries, flashlights, dish soap, laundry detergent, bleach, that kind of thing. Whatever your family uses on a daily or weekly basis, 
have a little bit extra of those things. And then also consider having reusable products like cloth diapers and cloth feminine product, hygiene products and rags to use in place of baby wipes in case you run out or you're not able to get enough. So that's the list. Those are the things to focus on right now. You wanna have food on your shelves, a way to purify water. You want to start developing your gardening skills if you haven't already. If you've already started gardening, do a little more, plant a little more, challenge yourself to expand. We have expanded this year and next year I'd love to expand a little more, although <laughs> basically all 16 of my beds are full this year. So, but I will learn every, every time you do this, you learn new things. So I'm learning new things as I go along and that will empower you for the future because right now, you know, our survival doesn't depend on the garden, but what if it does in the future, right? So you want to develop that skill. Don't ever say that you don't have a green thumb or can't grow things. I was always the girl that joked that, have joked that I always killed plants and my garden is thriving. So don't ever, never say never, okay? You can do it. And all of this, if you're new to this, if you basically just live week to week when it comes to groceries and you've never stockpiled anything, you know, when you see your soap running low, you get a new one, you know, and you don't have one that you can go get from the, from the cabinet. This might seem a bit overwhelming and I get that. It might overwhelm some people, but I don't want you to feel that way. If you do feel that way, let it motivate you instead of making you freeze because that will happen to some people when they get scared or fearful or overwhelmed, they freeze and they don't act. So if you do feel that way, try to fuel it into taking action instead of freezing. And again, it seem, might seem like a lot, and, but you don't have to go do it all at once. Do start today, do some, do one thing. Even if it's just print out some of your favorite recipes from the internet, do something today and that'll help get the ball rolling. And also keep in mind, if you're worried about the price, remember that whatever you buy this week is most likely gonna be cheaper than things next week and the week after and the week after that. And same goes with gas. Think about ways to save. So maybe shop at stores where you can get a gas discount, like you get points. Shop at warehouse stores like Costco. Shop at discount stores like Aldi. Uh, food co-ops like Azure Standard, you can get stuff in bulk there that you just can't find even at Costco. Keep an eye on your circulars and store coupons. Download the store app so you can get the digital coupons. Go to your local farm or farmer's market so things might be a little cheaper there because if it's local, they don't have to spend as much on fuel to transport the food. Consolidate errands to save money on food. So don't go out multiple times a week. Just go out once or maybe twice a week to do errands and shop for food. Or try to do a big shopping trip once every couple of weeks so that you don't have to go to the store as often. You can invest in a quarter or half a cow and put it that in your freezer. So the cow that we bought back in December, 2021, we're still eating off of that and food was significantly cheaper back then, but we're still eating on it. So it's like, we're still like, we're, we're, we have a cheaper product than if we would buy it now. So there are endless tips that I could give, but that's all for now. Again, use this for fuel to take action take action for your family care for your family in the best way that you can with the knowledge and resources that you have we all will be able to do different things some more than others but the important thing is to start taking action and doing what you can and to remember that we can have peace during turbulent times we're called to trust in god and to do what we can do what we're called to do to take care of our families and then leave the rest to God and he'll take care of us. So have faith in that, have hope in that and try to find that um, peace that doesn't come from the world, but comes from God. Just hold on to that, do what you can. And we are here for you to give you tips and walk alongside you. You know, this is affecting us too. And we have to start watching the budget close, more closely, just consolidate gas, you know, all that stuff. 
So almost nobody's immune to this. So we're all, we're in this together, you and me, all of us, and just stick with us, make sure to subscribe and we'll get through this and just have that confidence and, and prepare as best you can. And uh, we'll get through it. We'll, we can survive and thrive. So in the meantime, you take care, take care, save money when, where you can, and I will see you in the next video. Bye everybody.